probably about 10 years ago, I sat in the office um, and I looked out and uh, I could see that the, you know, I'd been to have a look and the, the stems were plastered in probably thousands and thousands, a complete covering of, um, of black fly, which you could hardly see on the, on the black stems. And I watched from my office window as a family of blue tits jumped on there and scoffed the lot. That's the way the food chain works as well, is that actually rather than using chemicals, if we can get the balance right, the wildlife will take a lot of the kind of insects um, that we, we don't like uh, and it'll help you know, sustain that family of blue tits for a, a week or two. So you can create a natural balance. Hello, all right. We're in um, at the third weekend of, uh, of January when it's the RSPB um, National Bird Count um, uh, weekend here in the UK where uh, households like ours um, stand by the window for an hour and count the birds that they can see out in their garden. And uh, my beloved, who's um, not far behind that camera there, um, spends... Uh, well, every day goes out and feeds the birds here. And I just wanted to kind of show you some of the stuff that goes on with wildlife in, uh, in our garden. You can probably hear some of the birds squawking and tweeting. Um, but if you look down here, we've got a, uh, a, crocus, a crocus bulb uh, that we didn't plant in the lawn. We planted the crocus over behind us there in the, um, in the pots. And in fact, if you quickly zoom around, you'll see them coming up in the pots um, just over there. There they are. So how did they get from the pots to here on the lawn? Well, it's because uh, we have squirrels. As well as feeding the birds, uh, the downside or the upside, if you like squirrels, is you get lots of squirrels coming in. And at some point, the squirrel has taken the crocus bowl out of the pot and planted it in the lawn, thinking he'd go back and scoff it and he's forgotten to, so every year this little crocus all on his own comes up to remind us that spring's uh, uh, on its way and that we've got, um, you know, we call it our garden, but actually it's not just ours, it's a garden we share with our local wildlife. So what do we do to, uh, to help um, our wildlife? Well, lots of plants out there, plants need, sorry, wildlife need plants as their habitat, either for food or for shelter. Um, and you'll see in the, the last video we did a week or so ago when I was trying to talk about our kind of wild area there, the hedge, um, the birds were squawking and squabbling in the, in, the, in the bushes there. It's great, great fun. We spend many a happy minute or hour watching the birds through the window. It's better than TV, I can tell you. Um, so we've got a number of different feeding stations here. Um, we, uh, we have that feeding tray there because some of the, um, some of the birds can't hang on the hanging bird feeders they're kind of more like ground feeders so um, we put that there and because we're aware that um, cats are around we try and position the bird feeders and so on in a, in a, in a place where cats can't easily kind of creep up and uh, and take a bird so birds feel quite safe and secure on there it would take it would take a cat several seconds to run across and, and reach them by which time they they've flown so that's for kind of for the uh, for the ground feeders Over here we've got the kind of more traditional uh, hanging bird feeder and the seed mix that you use. Is it all sunflower hearts that you've got in there? So we, uh, we use um, things like sunflower hearts, um, which uh, a lot of the smaller birds like the finches and the blue tits and so on, they love that and the robin. Um, so we're doing more to attract the smaller birds. And of course, just a little reminder that um, uh, you know, having plants with berries and so on, on is great for the, uh, for the wildlife. We often see the birds sat on there. In fact, I've got a photograph, which I might just slip in now, where when you're feeding the birds, um, you know, nature, it, there's a food chain there. And uh, as we started attracting um, more and more of the smaller birds, we found occasionally we'd get visitors like the sparrowhawk. And when one landed a few weeks ago, ago a couple of months ago, on top of that tree, it was an awesome moment. Um, and that's a good sign, you know, we don't like to think that some of these lovely little birds are being taken, but that's the way nature works. So you're supporting um, the wildlife and the, and the food chain. So ground feeders, hanging bird feeders, um, particularly in the winter, 
these kind of um, fatty suet feasts here uh, are great for kind of building up um, fatty tissues in the birds to give them a bit of um, protection over the um, over the winter. But I mentioned about the um, the burying uh, plants there. That's the uh, cotoniaster. Uh, weeping Cotoniaster hybridus pendulus there with the, with the red berries on. But just over there to your left, doesn't look very much at the moment, that there. Is uh, Sambucus and it's a beautiful shrub in the, in summer it has kind of um, purpley almost like black uh, leaves on it and you can get clusters of white flowers. It's in the elder, elder family and it's an ornamental elder as well as looking lovely and uh, attractive to look at, it's also very attractive to aphids. And uh, I remember probably about 10 years ago, I sat in the office um, and I looked out and uh, I could see that the, you know, I'd been to have a look and the, the stems were plastered in probably thousands and thousands, a complete covering of, um, of black fly, which you could hardly see on the, on the black stems. And I watched from my office window as a family of blue tits jumped on there and scoffed the lot. That's the way the food chain works as well, is that actually rather than using chemicals, if we can get the balance right, the wildlife will take a lot of the kind of insects um, that we, we don't like uh, and it'll, it'll help you know, sustain that family of blue tits for a, a week or two. So you can create a natural balance in, in your garden. So shrubs, feeders, ground feeders. The other thing we love to do, and I'll take you over this way to have a look, is to um, watch the birds in the bird bath. Um, just, just in one week. Remember last week we uh, we walked past and we saw these um, daffodil bulbs that were coming up. Look at all these flower buds that are coming now. Spring is coming. It won't be long. <coughs> anyway, that wasn't what I was going to show you. I got momentarily distracted. Um, we got the um, the bird bath there and it's hilarious to sit in our little kind of garden room there and watch the birds, um, I almost said singing, uh, kind of jumping around and playing in the water and squabbling with each other and washing themselves. I'll see if I can get a video clip and, and edit that in uh, to, the, um, to this video. So, uh, bird food, shrubs, habitat, berries, black fly, bird bath, squirrels, and here we have. Oh, there we no, go. I just took it away. Okay, so underneath here um, we have um, overnight we put a little tray in there to feed our little native hedgehog. Uh, we're not sure we might have more than one. Um, certainly he's been coming back and forth for a, a few years, so it could be um, a kind of an offspring of the original um, hedgehog. And down in that wild area there, below the, uh, below the fence, we've got lots of little piles of leaves and branches. He probably goes and um, you know, hibernates in there if he needs to, and certainly uh, during the daytime sleeps in there. And then normally, uh, around about just after it gets dark, we'll see him coming out from behind the shed, coming in here, and uh, we call him Hedgy. We had a long discussion about what we should call our, our, our native uh, friendly hedgehog and uh, Hedgy seemed uh, like a good good bet and he comes in and we just put that um, uh, that shelter there to keep the um, the food uh, clean and clean and dry. It's important talking of clean and dry that you keep your bird feeders clean as well so you know once every few weeks or so um, don't overfeed allow the, the food levels to go down every day or two so it's completely empty um, so that you don't get food that's hanging around too long in those bird feeders because you don't want any disease or problems to uh, accumulate so let the, the seed go right down give it a good old clean out so that there's no debris which might harbor um, diseases and um, keep the, the, the birds uh, healthy and anyway we um, we feed our hedgehog there so that's hedgy goes in this here is um this is Hedge's mate. We call this um, this is Hedge's mate, Bricky. Okay, so there's Hedgy and Bricky there, and, and Bricky just keeps an eye on um, on his shelter so that his um, his food stays dry and cats can't can't knock it over or anything like that. Um, 
So there we are. That's our happy little family of wildlife around our garden. You too could have a little menagerie, a little zoo of wild animals in your garden. Enjoy.